demo team position is the, for the pilot and the maintainers is two years. The safety observers, they're on a one-year rotation. Um, following the two years, then you'll be back into uh, combat operations or just to another normal assignment. Uh, for the demo pilot himself, we travel about every weekend from the middle of March to the middle of November. We do get a weekend off every now and then, but it equates to about 170 days a year on the road traveling around the country. Uh, we go everywhere, all over the U.S., and we've been uh, overseas down to South America and over to uh, Colombia, uh, Colombia, South America, and Czech Republic, uh, which is a couple of very unique locations. And we basically go anywhere the Air Force needs us to go to fulfill the mission of uh, showing the people what the planes can do, giving uh, some good community support, and uh, just letting them know that the Air Force is out there to protect them and to serve. Can't wait to see you this weekend. It's going to be a great show. Uh, what you can expect with the jet, uh, we're going to do some twists, turns, pulls, rolls, everything you could imagine that you could do in a jet aircraft. Uh, we'll be doing one pass about 650 miles an hour just off the surface of the ground. Uh, we're going to be doing some aileron rolls, some loops, showing some uh, high G turns, take this jet right up to 9 G's all the way around. Uh, we'll be doing our max climb where we go from the surface to 15,000 feet in just a matter of seconds, uh, demonstration, demonstrating the awesome thrust capabilities of the plane. Well, it's obvious you love your job. I'm telling you, it's a good job to have. Where are you originally from? I was uh, born in Grand Forks, North Dakota, way up north, but uh, raised in the Dallas, Texas area, in a little town of Ponder, Texas, uh, out there on a little bit of 10 acres of land out there, small community. Did you decide that you wanted to be in the Air Force first or that you wanted to fly first? Well, I told my uh, eighth grade teacher that I wanted to be an F-16 pilot, so I guess the fact that I was able to grow up and actually do that is uh, just a, I don't know, luck of the draw, I guess. Definitely a little bit of hard work, a little, little bit of perseverance and determination to, uh, to get it done. What would you recommend for anyone who was thinking about being a pilot as a young youngster? Tell them they need to uh, stay in school, listen to their mom and dad, got to learn how to take orders and follow orders, and uh, study those math and sciences. Keep that going in school. Those are definitely critical. Uh, it's very competitive nowadays in the, uh, in the service, especially in the Air Force, uh, and especially to become a uh, fighter pilot in the Air Force. So it's going to take your best effort all the time, uh, making good grades, doing some good leadership projects, and building you know, what we call it be a, a good resume. It's going to help you out if you pursue that career. F-16 Fighting Falcon is the uh, original factory name, and then uh, we call it the Viper as well, which was just one of the uh, submissions for the official name, but it never did become the official name, but it's the official unofficial name that we call it, so uh, you'll hear a lot of guys reference it to Viper or the Fighting Falcon. Obviously, it's one pilot sits up in the uh, front up there. Everyone asks, can I get a ride? And I say... It's a little tight up there, even for me, so uh, unfortunately we're unable to do that. Um, you can kind of see the HUD heads-up display there. It's a combining glass that sits right in front of the pilot, and that's where he can see some images that are projected up there on that screen. Um, the seat itself, which you can just kind of see, is an ejection seat. So obviously if you pull the handle, it shoots you out the uh, top of the aircraft, blows the canopy off. I have to ask, have you ever had to do that? I never have, so that's good. They say you lose about an inch, and I'm short enough as it is, so I don't need to do that. Um, just coming down the side, it's the in, in, intake on the aircraft where the air goes in down the motor, um, and then down the side. Uh, over on the side here, you can see that we got, this is a big lug nut. Basically, that's where we hang our external fuel tank. It's a big, huge tank. It holds about 2,700 pounds of gas. We put one on this side and one on the other side. And then we just start working our way out. Here's another area where we would generally hang all of our bombs, uh, any class of bombs from precision and non-precision weapons. Come out one more time, this is where we're going to hang those missiles that we talk about, and then out all the way to the end where we can hang another missile uh, on the aircraft itself. And as we work ourselves to the back, just basic flight controls that help the aircraft fly, uh, stabilize it in flight to give us a nice smooth ride. Is that a map of South Carolina I see up here? It sure is. That tells you where we, where we got it painted. Where you got it painted? Where we got it painted at Shaw Air Force Base. You flew in earlier this morning. We just got here about an hour ago. Uh, we'll be flying tomorrow out at uh, Falcon Field uh, doing our demonstration. It's a practice day. We'll use that as an opportunity to learn the show references, learn the show lines, check out any hazards in the area. And we'll be full up for our show on uh, Saturday and Sunday. I think 
the show runs from about noonish to five-ish. Uh, those are broad terms. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it should be a really good time. And uh, when we were talking yesterday, you said that Falcon uh, Field, that their uh, runway was just a little bit too short. You couldn't fly in it there. Sure is, yeah. I think they only got about 5,000 feet or so. The minimum that I can land this thing at is about 7,000 feet. We'd like to have as much as we can. Okay.